hello and good morning. Uh, my name is Eric from Games for Hyper and today I want to show you a walkthrough of my farming system. Of course what you see right now is just a quick example of how you can use this in game. So I have my watering can, I'm able to water the plants, I'm able to harvest them, I'm able to uh, consume uh, the items that I'm harvesting, I'm able to add fertilize to them like all of that um i'm going to uh, quickly go to the demo map uh, that is actually included in this project and i will see you there yes we are here um when you open the example map uh, this is what you will see and when you enter the first room you will see uh, this this settings room and it will show okay what do you need to set this up for your own character um, this uses an enhanced input plugin uh, that is for the controls, but also for um, executing the farming uh, logic. It uh, uses components um, to your uh, that you can add to your character. It's quite easy. Um, it shows which components you need to add to this character. And every component that you see right here on this list is included in the system. However, as an example, for instance, uh, we have this inventory screen um, and you can see like the top bar it also is crafting attributes, quest, map and settings, but that's not included in the system. Uh, currently we see on the left our inventory and on the right we see our equipment panel. And I think we will need that for our farming system. And of course it shows some quick controls, how to open it, how to perform an action, etc. So let's dive into the farming room. And when we dive into this, we see first uh, these five uh, very important um, equipment types. And it are seeds. You can equip a seed to plant it somewhere, fertilize it to make sure um, your farm will grow quicker, an optional building plan. Um, with a radio menu to choose the farmable from and to see, okay, um, which one do I want to plant? A watering can, of course, for watering, and a plant cure to cure plants. So let's check out the examples. So the first thing that you will see here is um, it includes a sprinkler system, and its sprinkler system. And make sure you can turn it on and you can turn it off. When it's on, everything in the radius is automatically watered. And when I turn it off again, uh, the watering stops. And as you can see, uh, this uh, broccoli is out of the range from the sprinkler. We can equip a watering can and by clicking on the left mouse button, we can water it manually. And at the moment we water it, you can see uh, it is growing. And in this case, this broccoli also has fertilizer in it. So it is currently consuming the water and the fertilizer to make sure this plant is growing. So now I have this empty spot here. And this empty spot is to place your own seeds. Um, and I have an example seed right here. I think that is a tomato. We can open our inventory screen. We see that we have a tomato seed, and if we double click on it, it will open a example building system. And this example building system is very basic, it's just uh, to place uh, this specific seed. And as you can see, we are not able to place it on this uh, uh, on, on, on this uh, ground, uh, but we are able to do it here on this landscape and also on this farming plot. So when I click my left mouse button, we will place the seat. It will also automatically close the building mode and we can walk to it and we can see hmm, it has a bit of water because I added it with my left mouse button um, and it is actually growing. And we can see the health of the plant. Uh, we can see that it is currently, uh, it, it has oxygen, it is healthy and it is in the sun. Um, so these are sufficient requirements for this plant to grow. At the moment, the water is at zero and the growing will stop. But we are also able to add fertilizer to it, like so. 
and if we do that and it will make sure to boost the growth of the farmable but also uh, increase the crop quality okay so now the water is uh, is at zero so we'll see the water is a requirement um, for the farmable to grow and it is a hard requirement so this means even though it has fertilizer and it is healthy it will not grow so it's not able to grow on only fertilizer so when i'm adding water again we will see it is growing again like so um okay let's go to the next one um i just mentioned uh uh, the, the UV the, the, that it was in the sun so in this case um, I'm just doing a trace upwards and it says okay this one is currently not in the full sun so you see the white bar that's the lowest bar that is the DK bar and that's increasing because it does not fulfill the requirements of uh, the grow however I created a UV lamp like this so you can see this cabbage is actually um, uh, currently fulfilling the growth requirements and that also means that we are able to harvest this cabbage like so um, the seasons um, uh, currently um, this box that you see you see this this outline um, that is uh, to set these farmer balls in a specific season and we can see um and this strawberry is currently out of season so it's decaying and uh, this cauliflower was also out of season so this one has decayed already it's uh, as you can see it's it's gone and this pumpkin it is the right season for it so i think the this box is setting it i think to autumn and autumn is a requirement for this pumpkin to grow but strawberries are not able to grow in autumn so like that and we are able to switch it quite easily of course we would like to simulate sickness so in this case uh, you can see the icon of uh, this 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 virus uh, so that means and the current plant is sick and you can see even though it has water and it has fertilizer it is not able to grow so what we can do we can equip a uh, plant cure we can walk towards uh, one of the sick plants and we can click on the left mouse button like so and now we have cured the plant with our plant cure and you can directly see it's able to grow again it is also good to know that the wall system is data table driven and what does it mean it means that every variable that is required to drive the farmable it is set in a, a kind of a spreadsheet and that spreadsheet I've also uh, made sure you can edit it via an Excel. Uh, so I've included this Excel that you see here. Um, uh, after verification, of course, this is just a snap uh, show that has a lot of different variables. And it makes it really easy to adjust and adapt different types of uh, farmables throughout your system, but also say, hey, I want to mass edit the um, water requirement, for instance. I want it to double it. Well, you can just drag and drop it and import it and bam, it's working. About the meshes, all of, all, of, all the meshes that you see right here is included in this system. And what I've done, I've made sure to uh, define different types of farmables. Um, so I'm able to reuse these assets based on a farmable category. And each farmable category has different stages so that uh, starts with a seed uh, it's going to stage one stage two stage three stage four eventually to uh, the, the, the finished growth state and of course we also need to have a decay state and as you can see I have made about a one two three four five six seven eight nine ten uh, different uh, farmable types so let's go over them the first one of course is just a dummy uh, this is for testing purposes the second one is um, a bush and a bush is more for 
farmables like strawberries, tomatoes, lemons, these kind of things. And this is a uh, like a, a low uh, um, a low plant, and then the low plant is more for a, a sprout uh, in between. So this is for a cauliflower, for instance. This one is more for the crop to uh, be below the actual uh, plant. So for instance, uh, a potato or beets, I think there is a perfect example of it. And of course we need a fine plant and the fine plant is for farmables like watermelons and um, pumpkins. This one um, is called a flowering hat and a flowering hat is for the, uh, the crop to grow uh, precisely in the middle of it and that is specifically used for instance for uh, broccoli. And of course we need a stake and the stake is uh, uh, a plant that grows around the stake and that's being used uh, for instance for grapes. And this one is like a a uh, long plant uh, that it can be used for instance for corn but also for uh, sunflower and of course we need trees uh, to grow fruits like apples pears uh, pomegranates uh, whatever you design and as you can see here it has a lot of different uh, types of um, uh, farmables crops and all of them are predefined already for you in this Excel, um, uh, you can just drag and drop it in your world and it will directly work. So this uh, area is for to show off uh, the growing stages. Of course, I already mentioned it a bit at the plants. Over here, we can see four uh, lemon plants, like one, two, three, four. And they are all shown in different stages. And this one is about like 30% uh, and that's still a sprout. And the second one is about 60, 65%. You can see it has growth uh, quite a lot. However, if we want to grow it more, so for instance, this is, I think, 85, 90%. So this is near finished. And eventually it is finished and it will show the actual crop. And in this case, a beautiful lemon. And then we are able to harvest it. Um, yeah, like so. Uh, in the in the back, you can see how it's set up in the data table. So what you see, uh, it's an array of growing states. So I see index zero, one, two, three, four to five, and it shows okay which mesh do I need to select for which growth stage, and also what is the required percentage uh, of growth to be in this growth stage. Regrow logic. Um, this is a very cool one. Uh, as you probably already have seen throughout the video, some crop seems to, when you harvest it, they just keep standing there. Uh, and some just uh, destroy completely. And some uh, just start from uh, like a small sprout again. So for instance, um, this strawberry bush, I've made it so that you... Um, when you grow this, it takes a, lo a longer time. However, when you finally have uh, uh, grown it, you can harvest it, but the full plant will still be there. And then after the initial harvest, the, the regrow time is going much quicker than the growth of the whole plant. So it makes sure to have like a, uh, uh, a crop that you can continuously uh, harvest. I've seen that uh, these two have already decayed, so let me uh, restart this project really quick uh, so we can also see how that works. Boom, restarted, so now they are here again. And as you can see, the, the, the pumpkin, if we are going to harvest this one, this one will make sure to um, yeah, regrow, but still it's going to regrow from a very small sprout, as you can see. And this is a potato, and if we harvest that one, that one uh, has no regrow. Uh, and you can all set this up via the data table again. Uh, and you can say, okay, um, what uh, 
uh, uh, does it have a regrow? If so, uh, what is the regrow time? And um, to what stage should I uh, set this if I am harvesting this specific crop? Okay, some harvesting logic. So what you can see here, um, I've made different types of harvesting logic. So this one is you harvest directly the wall plant. And in this case, you also harvest all the crops at once. But for the trees, I wanted to make sure you have pluckable yield. So I think I see a couple of apples here. One, two, three, uh, four. I see, oh, I already see five apples. So if I pick one, I'm uh, uh, getting the apple in my inventory. And now the second one and the third one like so and every time i am harvesting one you uh, see the, the the apple being removed from the plant and now oh, there were apparently six apples in the tree so i've harvested uh, all six of them and you can also see right now oh, it's not uh, 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 showing it again and actually uh, the apples will uh, uh, respawn over time there's also something uh, called crop quality uh, that's more inspired by uh, games like Stardew Valley. Um, if you add more fertilizer to it, the, the, the crop quality will increase, but also um, what was the, uh, the health uh, during the process uh, of that specific crop. Currently, uh, I'm just printing it in the uh, upper left corner. So if I'm harvesting it, you see harvest cabbage with quality silver. Uh, the pair silver bronze silver gold and i've defined a specific uh, type of uh, uh, chance factors you can see it a, a bit there on the back like so and uh, again based on uh, how much fertilizer and what type of fertilizer you have used um it, it, it's adapting the crop quality uh, the durability um, here we have three decayed uh, items and as you can see they are all dead however besides decaying uh, the plant also has a health variable you can also see that the health variable is changed over all of these plants so that's more for if you want to apply damage to them for instance with a sword uh, or whatever you can well, I think this gives a pretty good overview of what the capabilities of the system is. Um, maybe the last thing that I can show you is part of the radial menu. The things that you see here is actually not included. That's only in my project. You will see this uh, farmable radial menu. And I think it just picked up a corn seed and you can see the requirement is one corn seed. And I am able to place it like this and you can see it does require water so let's get some water so and of course we want it to grow faster and of course also with a higher crop quality so let's add fertilize to it yep like so Okay, um, I think this gives a perfect overview of what the capabilities of this system are. Um, I hope you liked it. Please let me know what you think of it. And I hope you have a very nice day. Congrats, you have reached the end of this video. And of course, I hope you liked it. So please let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Uh, feel free to reach out anytime, for instance, via Discord or Patreon. And don't forget to check out one of the videos that I will be posting somewhere here. And of course, I hope you have a very nice day. Bye.